It's a second area code 910. You are on the air. That is North Carolina. Oh, boy. Here we go. Welcome. <laughs> 910, you're on the line. I have a bad feeling about this. I'll relax, Donovan. I knew it. I fucking I knew it was going to call in. I knew it as soon as I saw 910. Here we go. That's kitten. That's kitten. Hey. Hey. Hello. What up? I couldn't really hear exactly what you. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. So I couldn't really hear what you were just talking about, but I wanted to touch on um, what we were talking about a minute ago: how women self-help communities or help each other out the way men do. And I mean, I've thought about this a lot and I think part of it is because if you look at most female self-help, it's all empowerment and um, confidence building. So women attribute all of their personal pain to either some sort of outside force, like being oppressed by men or being oppressed by the patriarchy or being harmed and, and being a victim of some outside power or to just not feeling good about themselves because our, our feelings and our emotions are our reality. So if we fix our feelings. Kitten, our sweetheart, power, get to the point. Get to the point. We got other callers here. Come on. Okay. Okay. So, so we also see men as the cause and solution of all of our problems. So to actually realize that our behavior and our actions are creating the physical pain, like the physical and emotional pain in our lives, creates a huge amount of cognitive dissonance. Also because everything that we're told by feminism and by society, by the blue of society, is that we are flawless and we can do no wrong and that, 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 that we're fine and that if we follow the guidance of feminism, we will not have pain. So it takes a lot of pain in a woman's life to actually realize that it's the message of feminism that might be leading them astray and personal consequences. But They're it's destroying their life. They love kindly letting you fail. I'll give you that. And it's all about coping. What's that? A lot of it's about coping. So I'll, I'll go with you on that one. They don't want to actually fix things. They just want to feel better. It's a coping strategy, which sounds a lot like the beta male Star Wars thing. But I'll pass it over to Carl. I know he's itching for this one. Carl? <laughs> well, you know, if you really want the exemplification of everything Kitten just talked about, go on Instagram or ideally on Tumblr and look up the hashtag body positivity or help <laughs> at every size. Right. There you because go. That's the entire hypo agency thing. It's mm -hmm. essentially a gathering of mostly women and a couple of well, I would say men, but it's not easy to do quotation marks without a camera, <laughs> sitting around complaining that it's not their fault that they're overweight. And in this case, I'm using the way overweight in the way that the U.S. has a slight deficit. Uh, because it's it's, not my, No, it's not my fault I'm a slut. All those guys wanted to fuck me first, right? Like that's Well, it's I'm diet doing. culture, it's PCOS, it's hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, everything except the fact that, hey, Maybe I shouldn't be drinking a 7,000 calorie mocha latte for breakfast. All right. I'm here now. It's thick with four C's. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to, what I was going to say is that in, in some ways, I guess I kind of understand what she's saying because it's, I think that there, you know, we always talk about the blue pill and blue pill conditioning for guys. Okay. There is a form of conditioning for women. I don't know if we want to call that blue pill conditioning for women or whatever, but that conditioning is, is this empowerment narrative that we teach our little girls from the time they're fucking four years old to get into, you know, Disney frozen, or, you know, they get into this, this little girl, super powered princess, uh, this, uh, what do they call the characters of Mary Jane, right? They, the, what do they say about, yeah. uh, Ray from, from star Wars, right? She's a Mary, Mary, a Mary Sue, a Mary Sue, Mary Sue, yeah. Mary Sue character. And she just magically, because she has this magical vagina that she's, she can suddenly use a lightsaber and she can do all this. That's one example of, of a lot of stuff, but that is being taught to girls that they can do anything. I mean, even if you look at the, um, the Miss America pageant, it's no longer a pageant anymore. It's a competition. Well, it's a competition of what? What woman can be the most confident and can be the most, you know, can share the, the empowerment message the best. Uh, and really what it comes down to is these guys or these, these women who have been sort of conditioned and taught by uh, a 
by well, feminism for first of all, but like to to prioritize the feminine imperative above all else and to expect that men will do the same and to expect that men will be the supportive guys that they, you know, who also agree with them and to expect that this is the way, this is like this utopian society that we can, you know, men are going to, they're going to have your backs and they're there for your support rather than the other way around. And so when I talk about how, uh, you know, genetically evolutionary wise, how, um, how women are different from men and that put us together and we make pretty good compliments of each other, compliments of each other, both psychologically and physiologically, we can, we do this, but what feminism is teaching women right now is that they don't need men. Literally, they don't need that. They need, all they need is themselves and to think positive thoughts and they're, they're their own source of confidence. And they are this one autonomous thing that can that is self-fulfilling and self-satisfying yeah. and, self and it doesn't matter you don't need a man in your life if you want one great that's great because men are superfluous they teach this idea that women are these autonomous creatures and that men are just these these you know support you know either they're, they're there to support you provisionally or they're there to fuck you okay mm -hmm. that those, to that's clear. what men do to do to clarify for viewers who are not as familiar with your work this is a collection of lies similar to the blue pill that fucks up women's lives yeah. it's propaganda basically like, feminism, feminism is one it's one big lie man like yeah, well, I, think, I think that's i think i think that's pretty clear and then you're you're fighting against also women's innate nature which is solipsistic okay yep. if you go and you teach women that it's all about them and they're already solipsistic to begin with it literally is all about them and that's you know and so again and then you take that into a larger social narrative and it becomes the sisterhood of Morales. we are right, a well, standard was, uh, of identity yeah yeah, yeah we're, we're going to we're going to drop cutting off no you got to go we got to go to the next call <laughs> harry code <laughs> Car five, two, you are on live with the red man group what you got hey guys 